Howdy, folks. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to start understanding uh, the graphs of exponential functions and the graphs of logarithmic functions. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, just for in this video, I'm going to show you how to sketch the graph of an exponential function. And then in the next video, we'll uh, sketch the graph of a logarithmic function. But this is something that's probably going to last for a few days because we're going to start off with the basic function, which we, what we call the parent function. And then we're going to go from the parent function and we're going to learn how the graph uh, trans, you know, transforms or translates around the coordinate plane. Uh, so let's start with something very, very basic, very simple. Remember that an exponential function is a function where the variable, the input variable x, is in the exponent. Okay? So here we'll have f of x, the function x is equal to 2 to the x power. Okay? And this is uh, often considered to be the parent function for exponential functions, 2 to the x power. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off numerical, then we're going to plot all the points that we find, and then we're going to uh, we're going to draw a curve on the coordinate plane. Then we're going to try and understand some certain qualities about that graph. All right, so uh, it's a good idea from the very beginning uh, if you're going to understand something numerically to maybe start at zero or one or negative one or something. So why don't we do this? Why don't we start at zero? We'll plug in a zero. We'll, we'll plug in a one. Uh, we'll plug in a two. And then, um, well, let's stop there. All right, so let's plug a zero in. So if we plug a zero in here, we'll have two to the zero power, right? In fact, let me do this. Write it over here. We would have two to the zero power. Well, what is anything to the zero power? Uh, anything to the zero power except zero. Anything else to the zero power is one. And therefore, two to the zero power is one, okay? Now, if we put a 1 in, we'll have 2 to the first power. And 2 to the first power, anything to the first power is itself, right? So 2 to the first power, that's going to be 2. Now, let's plug in a 2, and we'll have 2 to the second power. That's 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4, OK? So we'll put 4. So we have the point 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. Let's, pl let's plot those. Here's the x-axis. I moved it down a little bit because we're going to need some space up here. So 0, 1, so at the point 0, 0, 1. And then 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, good. All right, and then 2, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. All right. Now let's go backwards, shall we? Because something very interesting happens with exponential functions when we go to negative, toward negative infinity. So you're going to put negative 1 here. So what we're looking at is 2 to the negative 1 power. What is 2 to the negative 1 power? Well, I've got to remind you about something. I want to remind you that negative exponents, for example, if we had x to the negative 1 power, negative exponents indicate uh, the, the reciprocal of the base. And so uh, x to the negative 1 power is actually 1 over x to the first power. x to the negative 2 power is 1 over x to the second power. So if we had something like 2 to the negative 1 power, that would be 1 over 2. So that's what negative exponents do. They cause it, you have to turn it into the reciprocal or a fraction where you do 1 over the base uh, to, to the positive power. All right. So this, so 2 to the negative, excuse me, not here. Let's go over here. So 2 to the negative 1 power is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 over 2, or 1 half. So then let's, let's do uh, negative 2. So this would be 2 to the negative 2 power. That would be the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power. And 2 squared is 4, and so we have 1 over 4. And I want you to notice something here. If we were to redo this in a new table and do x and f of x. And instead of doing it in this order, if we did it in the correct order where we do negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, then 1, then 2, 
what we would have is one fourth, one half, one, two, and four. See what's happening here is as we get closer to an input of zero, uh, this value is actually getting larger. One fourth, then one half, then one. It almost, this is basically the same thing, this one is basically the same thing as one over one. See this four? Half of four is two, half of two is one. And now, as we continue, this is, well, now we can think of the numerator as we go to positive values is now doubling. So this one now becomes a two, so this is two over one, and then four over one. And so we have this reflection across this input of zero to where the denominator on the negative side is equal to the numerator on the positive side. So then here at negative two, denominator four, positive two, numerator four. Okay, this is an in interesting phenomenon of exponential functions. Okay, so if we go over here now and graph it, we know at negative one, we're going to have one half. So that's negative one and one half. Well, one half is only halfway up to the next square, so the dot's going to go there. And then at negative two, we'll have one fourth. So at negative two, instead of, going, here's half, and then half of a half is one fourth, so we'll have a dot right there. Now look what's happening here, this is interesting. <clears throat> These dots are getting closer to the x-axis, but here's the interesting thing, is that they will never actually reach zero, and I'm gonna show you why. But in order to show you why, I have to erase this. The reason why is because 2 to the x power can never equal 0. This will never reach 0 because there is no power that you can raise 2 to and get 0. Well, we know that if we raise 2 to a positive power, the number is going to get larger and larger and larger. So 2 to the third power is 8, 2 to the fourth power is 16 then 32, then 64, 128, 256, 512, 1,024, 2,048. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. So that leaves, and we know that raising it to the zero power is just going to make it equal to one. The only way it's going to get smaller is to raise it to negative powers. But here's the problem. The same thing is going to happen even if we did negative a million. Okay, the negative powers uh, are going to go, so if we have 2 to the negative 3 power, okay, remember, like the pattern we just saw, 2 to the third power is 8. Therefore, 2 to the negative third power is 1 eighth. And then the next one's going to become 1 16th, then 1 32nd, then 1 64th, then 1 128th. And even though you know, we know that as, if the numerator stays 1 and the denominator gets larger and larger and larger and larger, larger and larger and larger, then the number is actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? 1 128th is a smaller number than 1 64th, right? And that's all that's going to happen is the numbers are going to keep getting smaller and smaller, but they are never actually going to reach zero. And when that happens, there's a special name for a situation where, a, where the output value of a function gets uh, closer and closer to a value without ever actually reaching that value, and that's called a horizontal asymptote. Let me write that word up here. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E, asymptote, okay? An as a horizontal, we'll put an H in front of it, horizontal means sideways, right? A horizontal asymptote. So, whatever number the function is getting closer to is where the horizontal asymptote is. And these values are getting closer and closer and closer to zero. In fact, if you were to punch them in a calculator, you would get 
uh, values, that decimal values that are still positive, but they're smaller and smaller and smaller, and they get closer to zero and closer to zero and closer to zero. It's like they're trying to get to zero, but they will never actually reach zero. And so the way we represent an asymptote oftentimes is by a dashed line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this dashed line along the x-axis. And what's going to happen is these dots are going to get closer and closer and closer to zero, but they're never actually going to reach zero. And this is going to happen with every single exponential function. They are all going to get larger in one direction and smaller in the other direction. But in the other direction, in the negative direction, they're going to get closer and closer and closer to zero. So here's what you are going to have to do. You are going to draw, you're always going to draw in one direction, you're always going to draw a line. The curve is always going to get closer to zero, with never, but never actually touching zero. It's going to get flat. That's what's happening. In one direction, the curve of an exponential fu function, the curve of an exponential function is going to get flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter. Okay? However, in the other direction, the curve is actually going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. See, now we only went out to 2 here, but if we went out to 3, when x equals 3, f of x is equal to 2 to the third power, which is 8. 2 to the fourth power, that's 16. And I'm not going to fit anything larger than that on this, on this board. So if I go to 3, 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And this, so now it's getting steeper. See, look, from here to here, it goes up by 4. But then from here to here, it goes up by 8. And the next one, going up to 5, it's going to go up by 16. Then it's going to go up by 32. Then it's going to go up by 64. Then it's going to go up by 128. It's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And it's going to do that through, through infinity. Okay. So what you're looking at here is the graph of 2 to the x power. And what I'm about to show you is we're also going to graph uh, 3 to the x power, 4 to the x power. We'll probably stop there. But um, what I want to show you is that all of them do three things. Let me write this down. All of them do all exponential functions. And now I'm talking the parent functions before they've been translated. All of these base functions do three things. The first thing they do is they all go through, they all go through the point zero, 1. Every single one of them goes through the point zero, 1. That's because 3 to the 0 power is 1. 4 to the 0 power is 1. e to the 0 power is 1. 5 to the 0 power is 1. 500 to the 0 power is 1. Anything except 0 to the 0 power is equal to 1. All right, so all of them go through the point zero, 1. The second thing that they all do is they all go flat toward negative infinity. Okay, when I meaning x negative infinity, toward x approaching negative infinity. When x is approaching negative infinity, as, as we go backwards along the graph, this graph becomes flatter and flatter and flatter. And then the third thing that they all do is they all get steeper. They all get steeper as x approaches positive infinity. So as the x values get larger and larger and larger, the graph gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. So it goes from flat to steep. That's what all of these exponential functions do. They go from flat to steep. And then as they're going, and the place where they stop being flat and start being steep is at the point 0, 1. Okay? So now we're going to do the graph of 3 to the x power. And I'm going to show you one more thing about these functions that will help you to be able to graph them. All right. So f of x is equal to 3 to the x power. Okay. Now... All 
basic exponential functions without additional translations. They all have a horizontal asymptote. I, I should have mentioned that too. They all go flat toward x approaches infinity at y equals 0. That means that they have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So we know we're going to draw a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. We know that it's going to go through the point 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay? And now we know that it's going to go flat toward negative infinity. Flatter and flatter. There we go. And then the last thing, now here's the last thing we're going to do. Okay? So we've got it going through 0, 1. We have it going flat. Now it's got to go steeper, but I need more points than just 0, 1. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do two more points. I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, x equals 1, excuse me, x equals 1 and x equals 2. All right? Ba which basically means is I'm going to go over 1 and then up a certain amount. Then I'm going to go over another one and up a certain amount. Okay? So, and the amount I'm going to go up when I go over 1 is going to be equal to the base of the exponential function because 3 to the first power is 3. So I'm going to go to 1, 3. So if I had the function f of x is equal to 25 to the x power, I would go to the point 1, 25. If I had the point 7 to the x power, I would go to the point 1 and 7. Okay? So I'm going to go to the point 1 and 3, which is right here. So my graph is going to have to go through that point. And then I'm going to square that number. 3 squared is 9. And that's where I'm going to go over here. So 2, and I'm going to go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. And now, go through that point, and then it's just going to get steeper and steeper and steeper. And there's my graph of 3 to the x power. <clears throat> Let's do uh, 4 to the x power. Okay. Da, 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 da. So f of x is equal to 4 to the x power. You should try it. You should go ahead and pause the video right now and see if you can graph it yourself. All right. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we, we know we want it to go through the point 0, 1. We know that it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at 0. Okay? And we know that it's going to go flat coming back whoops, to infinity. It's never going to be perfect. Just make it look kind of flat, like it's a, almost a straight line. Uh, now, I'm going to go forward to 1. And what's the base? The base is 4, so I'm going to go to 1, 4. All right, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 1. Then 4 squared is 16, so I'm going to go to 2, 16. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right there. That's pretty steep. And now this line is going to go through here. And then through there. And look at how steep that became. See? We're flat and then steep. Right? Flat and then steep. That's what exponential functions do. That's what the base exponential functions do. Okay? Um, all right. You know what? Let's, do, let's go back and do 2 to the x power, and then we're going to do e to the x power. All righty. Let's erase this. So we're going to do f of x is equal to 2 to the x power. All right. Now, we already did this one before, so you should know what it looks like. But now you have the technique. First, we know it's going to go through the point 0, 1. We also know it's going to go flat at, x, or at y equals 0. Right? So we know that coming back from here, it's going to become flatter and flatter and flatter. Right? Then, where is it going to go through when x is equal to 1? When x is equal to 1, we're going to go over 1, up 2, right? Over 1, up 2, all right? Then we're going to go over 1 more, and what's 2 to the second power? 2 squared is 4. So we're going to go over to 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's going to go through that point. And so now, it's going to go through here, then it's going to go through here, and we actually could... 
Uh, the next one is it's going to go through is 8 and then 16 up here. So if you wanted to draw those, the smaller the base, the smaller that the base is, the closer that the base is to 1, uh, the, the less steep it is over here. And, uh, and so, oops, that's a little too steep right there. Almost made a vertical line there. All right. And there. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you know anything about vertical asymptotes, vertical asymptotes are like horizontal asymptotes. That's where, the, where a curve gets closer and closer to a vertical line, but never actually touches it. Well, sometimes an exponential function can look like it has a vertical asymptote because it's going very steep, but it does not. Exponential functions, regular exponential functions, do not have a vertical asymptote. They are going steeper and steeper, but they can go all the way out without breaking, all the way out to infinity. Okay? All right, let's do e to the x and we'll wrap it up. All right, e to the x power. Now, you may want to have a scientific calculator for this. So I'm going to go get one. There's my scientific calculator. And the reason you may need a scientific calculator is because E is an irrational number. But there is a button on the calculator that says E. And so uh, we're going to use that, but only for like two of the points. See, E to the x power is still an exponential function. And because E is not 0, e to the 0 power is still 1. And so this function is still going to go through the point 0, 1. And at, in the negative direction, we would have e to the negative 1, and then e to the negative 2, and e to the negative 3. And I really, I should be drawing this backwards, but still. Uh, what it's going to become is going backwards, it'll be 1 over e, and 1 over e squared, and 1 over e to the third. And because e is larger than 1, these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, just like 2 to the x power, or 3 to the x power, or 4 to the x power. So moving backwards, e to the x still has a horizontal asymptote at 0, and it goes flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter. All right. So now you may say, but Mr. Ryan, now you want to plot the point x equals 1, and the answer would be 1 comma e. That's correct. If I have e to the x power, when I put a 1 in here, I'll have e to the first power, and e to the first power is equal to e. So I'd have 1 comma e, and that is a point on the coordinate plane. But where is it? Well, E is a, new, is a mathematical constant approximately equal to 2.71828 and a whole bunch of other numbers. But if you want to find out for sure, grab your scientific calculator, look for the LN button, which on this calculator is right about there. And it, over top of LN, it says E to the X power. So if I press second and then LN, it shows me e to the power of. Now I just need to put in what power. So I'll put in the first power. e to the first power, which is just e, and I press enter, and look at that. 2.71828. 1828. Now the next numbers are not 1828, so it's not a repeating, it's not a repeating decimal. Okay? Uh, but the first couple times, the 1828 comes up. So uh, we got to go somewhere near 2.7. Well, if I go here, if I go up 1, 2, 0.7 is past the halfway mark, but not quite to the 3 quarters mark. So I'm going to put a dot right there. That's about 2.7 maybe. And now, if I go out to 2, I need to know what e squared is. Well, I know this, that e is between 2 and 3. And I know that 2 squared is 4. And that 3 squared is 9. And so e squared has to be somewhere between those two numbers. And since e is closer to 3 than it is to 2, 
it's probably closer to 3 squared, okay? But let's find out for sure. We got a scientific calculator. I'm actually going to arrow up and I'm going to reuse my e to the power of, but I'm going to change the 1 to a 2, so I have e squared. I'm going to press enter and it says 7.389. So that's about 7.4. So I'm going to go up. This is 4, 5, 6, 7, and 0.4 is just below 7.5, just about half, just below halfway. And so that and see, I was right. It is closer to 3 squared than, than it is to 2 squared. And so now that I have a couple points, I can just draw this line, the curve through here, then through here, and then just make it go steep. It doesn't matter what it goes through after that point. After you have a, just a few important points, just make it go steep. That's it. Okay? So flat on the left, steep on the right. Okay? All right, so that's e to the x power. You should be able to do this. Uh, with any base, 7 to the x, 6 to the x, 5 to the x. You should even be able to do it with 1.5 to the x power, 2.3 to the x power, 3.2 to the, to the x power. Um, the more you practice it, the better you'll understand. But this is the basic shape of all exponential functions. Okay? I'll see you in the next video for logarithmic functions.